Hey guys, Rollout here with LEGO Pro Mare on the scene equipment docking. My toy tech! Behold! My toy embodies the firefighting heritage and soul of a Far East Island nation. It symbolizes the spirit of the brave men who fought fire with their bare hands. I'm a big fan of Promare, obviously, and after watching the movie for the first time, one thing I noticed is that every Lego Matoy tech I'd seen was too big. This is a very small mech, and I wanted to try building my own as close to minifigure scale as I could. Now because it's so small, it doesn't fit an entire minifigure, and it doesn't transform. But the on-screen transformation is a bunch of mass-shifty nonsense, so let's ignore that. This entire model is actually built around a minifigure torso. The pilot's chest is clearly visible in the cockpit, so I used that as a starting point. From there, it's made up of three chunks, the legs, the arms, and the headdress, all of which connect to that torso directly. This means that Gallo is structurally necessary, and without him, none of this fits together by itself. Now the pilot's legs actually fit inside of the mechs, so I couldn't very well use normal minifigure legs because they don't split apart. Instead, I had to brick build an approximation. This middle portion here is meant to represent Gallo's red pants with a black harness draped over them, and I think it looks pretty okay. Unfortunately, the red kind of blends into the red armor of the mech itself, but if you know what you're looking at, I think it makes sense. It has this middle cod piece here, which can swing out of the way, enabling some extra articulation. These can go in and out, forward and back, and rotate at the thigh. This is attached to a silver tank back here, either a fuel tank or a CO2 tank. Either way, there are meant to be some armatures attached to it that connect to the leg itself so that the Matoy tech can remain intact without the pilot inside of it, but I couldn't fit in such a small detail at this scale. Now, the Matoy Tech gets around on these mobility treads back here. They have more of a triangular shape in the movie, but I also had to have them double as heel spurs to keep this very top-heavy mech upright. And I think it works out pretty well. Unfortunately, I had to cram in so much detail and so many curves into such a tiny space that the lower legs don't have a whole lot of articulation. This is about as far as they can bend, but they can rotate and tilt in and out, which once again helps this guy stay upright pretty well. Fortunately, the Matoy Tech doesn't move its legs a whole lot. More often than not, it jets around on those mobility treads and just sort of rolls into battle, so I think it just about gets away with having so little articulation. Fun fact, a minifigure hand actually plugs into the bottom of a minifigure torso, enabling this connection and also providing him with waist articulation, which is pretty cool. The chassis of the mech attaches to the torso with a clear neck connector, and then the arms attach to the torso with a Lego rubber band that feeds through it. Incidentally, this also represents the black strap that attaches his single white sleeve, and also provides that waist articulation with friction. Now, the hair doesn't actually fit inside once all is said and done. The headdress assembly actually attaches directly to the top of his head, but while that's off to the side, I might as well show you what this looks like. For articulation, the arms go forward and back, in and out. They bend at the elbow and rotate at the forearm. The shoulder armor is kind of strangely attached. You can see these robot claws here attached to these bars that they slide upon. They can go up and down. They can also 
rotate, but the tension of this piece is very specific, allowing it to swing forward and back. This connection isn't ideal, but it allows a significant amount of articulation, and it's surprisingly solid. I needed these to be so articulate so that they can get out of the way of the headdress assembly, and at this scale, I did not have very many options. This is, of course, the defining feature of the Matoi Tech. It's based on early-era Japanese firefighters who wore these tall, pointed hats with capes that came down and protected them from flames. On the front here, it has this officer's cap here. There's supposed to be a burning rescue badge in the middle there, but I didn't want to represent that with a sticker, especially not on this corner as the very striking light blue visor with an orange roll cage that comes down and forms kind of a samurai chin strap there. Very cool. You have these light bars here on top, which are independently articulate. The capes, of course, can move. And then you have these neon ribbons at the bottom, which I represented with these curved claw elements. Very dynamic. Of course, those are plenty articulate as well. From the bottom, um, you can see just how strangely this roll cage is connected. I used some robot claws here which clip into the bottom of these plates, and then the rest is formed by minifigure arms. Luckily, all of this came in orange. This golden bar in the middle actually isn't properly connected at all. It's held in by friction, but it works pretty well as long as you're careful with it. Like I said, this assembly attaches directly to Gallo's head. Bring down the capes. And there you have Lucia's side project in all of its glory. I absolutely love the colors and the overall silhouette of this design. You can see Gallo inside well enough to establish scale, but there is a little bit of functionality missing there. In the movie, this roll cage assembly actually extends up into the body and attaches to the torso of the mech so that just this visor section here can slide up on this spire, revealing the pilot inside. Obviously, that is not possible here. His signature weapon is this mechanical hook tool, which I've built fairly simply. I suppose that Matoy firefighters used long hooks to clear away burning rubble. Either way, the shaft of this weapon is meant to be a lot longer than this, but this is just about the longest rod that LEGO makes. I thought about using white flex tube, but I didn't think it was rigid enough. It also has a convertible ice blaster form, which I've built as a separate accessory. You can see that it folds in half and sprouts a gun barrel. I had to attach the actual hook itself differently because of the change in orientation, and I like to add an ice blast effect to the front, which I think sells the whole thing. In its final configuration, by pulling this lever, it emits a water blade. For this, I needed to add an additional handle so that he can hold it properly. I also inverted the entire build and extended the shaft using these cylinder pieces. Because despite continuity, if the blade of this form isn't long enough, it just looks silly. Because Lucia, the mechanic of the Matoy Tech, is probably my favorite character in the movie, I also wanted something to represent her, and this is a little drone that she flies around to support Gallo. It's shaped like a firefighter's watchtower, and the dishes are meant to represent neon spinning propellers. Now, while this is a very simple looking thing, it was honestly quite expensive, 
to recreate because as of this recording, this red pyramid piece doesn't come in any official sets. I had to purchase a factory prototype off of Bricklink, and it wasn't cheap. Finally, for size comparison, here it is with a minifigure. Here it is with Bumblebee. Just for fun, here it is with Gridman. And of course, here it is squaring off against Leo. Until next time, this has been Rollout, signing off.